It's a lovely sunny but very windy day and I'm in Warham Percy or in the area of Warham Percy which is a hidden medieval village which you will see towards the end of this little walk. It is only a, a short walk but my stick with me today. Got my backpack, got my new baggie. That's for you, that's for all the bits that you require to join me on this. Uh, yeah, something you might notice is the fields are ripe for cutting. I think what I'll do for this season is cover autumn and winter. This is literally on my doorstep where I live and I had absolutely no idea. You just don't. You just drive past it getting to B from A. But every now and then, veer off the main road and you find wonderful little spots like this. This walk started at a car park just over the brow of the hill down this lane. And I'm just heading down here. And I've just come out of the car park, I'm heading down here, and then I take a right turn. And I think there's a little bit of lanes to start. And then we get into those hills over there. That's wheat. And then the stalks, after taking all the wheat off it, I loaded it into the tractors, something like this thing, a combine harvester, or it's what they used to be called, cuts it all down. Well, that's the thing that separates the wheat from the chafe, right? Is that right? The wheat from the chafe? Is that where the phrase comes from? And the chafe is, I guess, straw or hay. In this case, it's, it's straw. And this is a field that's completely, well, nearly, he's, he's, he's way over there working away. I mean, this thing here, I mean, that has to be a million pounds, right? That sort of, look at it, it's incredible. And then I guess this all gets dug up, this field. Start all over again. Lots of farm activity going on here. So what I'm gonna do is head straight ahead here down this track. Instead, this is what the guidebook says anyway, instead of going left down this bend where that farmer's just gone. Straight on down here following this uh, signpost, which says Centenary Way. I know you're wondering, and you're right, it is a busy old uh, route, this. I'm not too keen on filming when there's people about. I kind of like the feel of it being quiet, but, uh, such a nice day. A lot of people are using this Sunday afternoon to do this walk. And at the end of it is the medieval village. But I suspect it will be, uh, well, shall we say, I suspect it will be, I suspect when we get there, there won't be much left of it. It is a very, very windy day today. I, I don't have headphones on, so I can't really hear what you're hearing. But uh, I moved the microphone up a little bit on my T-shirt. So hopefully if the wind doesn't drown out the words of wisdom that I share in every video. Right, so we've come to a little bend in the, in, the, in the track. So what do I do now? Do I go left? Do I go straight on? Part of me hopes I go right, <laughs> which wasn't one of the options. But part of me hopes, go on, you tell me, what, what, what should I do? Should I go down there? Or should I go up there? What should I do? Well, when in doubt, look at the book. Let's have a look. So I've got a choice. I can go down there where those people have just gone. 
And I've just come up there. Beyond the wood, walk on along the top of an expansive field. That is an expansive field. To exit through a gate at the far end. Let's go. One of the ladies there started talking about focusing on the red. I said, are you talking about vanishing points? She said, oh, no, that's what you're supposed to do in professional photography, isn't it? Focus on the red. I guess it is. You learn a new thing every day. Even when you're in a mad, expansive field as this, you learn things you did not know. I shall now, from now on, focus on the red. So here we've got a new crop, look. I don't know what it is. You might notice all this white stones here. That's chalk. Because a lot of the bedrock, I guess you call it, of East Yorkshire is chalk. And if you venture out to the coast, you'll see that all the cliffs are white. So it's not just the white cliffs of Dover, the white cliffs of East Yorkshire and many other parts of the untied kingdom. No, no people know that. No, no people know that. No, 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 no. The, um, there's a sign over there. It's got the sun behind it, so it might be, might be hard to film it. But let's just have a look. So that's a bridal walk down there, or a bridal way. And it says Centenary Way, continue on. So we'll go this way. You know, many people write to me. I get my mail bag there and in it's thousands of letters from fans who uh, want to know all sorts of things about me. But one of the most popular questions is, Craig, what's the difference between a bridal way and a pathway? Well, a pathway is for feet. And technically, you're not supposed to ride a horse or a bike down a pathway. Whereas a bridal way is a little bit more inclusive. Horses, bikes, but people on their feet have right of way. So if somebody's walking, you're supposed to move over so they can get past. And I think that's just a safety thing rather than a anything else thing. Quite interesting though. Obviously when I say lots of people write to me, I mean absolutely nobody writes to me. I always get a little bit concerned when I go down a hill, because that means that I have to go up a hill. But I know, I need to embrace the exercise. I appreciate that. I'm embracing. Embracing now. You know, I passed quite a few people. I haven't filmed them, but I've passed quite a few people. It's a Sunday afternoon and I'm quite, it's quite good, isn't it, that people are going out, having a walk, seeing the land that they live in or next to. I think it's kind of important. A lot of other YouTubers talk about this being sort of good for the soul and good for the spirit. A lot of emphasis on mindfulness. And I think that's true, if that's what you need. But uh, I think the key thing for me is the fresh air. It's good for the skin. It just makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you've done something. You've not just sat under a ceiling in some, underneath some 60 watt bulb, looking at your computer screen, which I would like you to do more of, please, on this, my YouTube channel. I always get a little bit concerned when I go down a hill because that means that I have to go up a hill. But I know, I need to embrace the exercise. I appreciate that. I'm embracing. Embracing now. 
Do you know, I passed quite a few people. I haven't filmed them, but I've passed quite a few people. It's a Sunday afternoon and I'm quite, it's quite good, isn't it, that people are going out, having a walk, seeing the land that they live in or next to. I think it's kind of important. A lot of other YouTubers talk about this being sort of good for the soul and good for the spirit. A lot of emphasis on mindfulness. And I think that's true, if that's what you need. But uh, I think the key thing for me is the fresh air. It's good for the skin. It just makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you've done something. You've not just sat under a ceiling in some, underneath some 60 watt bulb, looking at your computer screen, which I would like you to do more of, please, on this, my YouTube channel. That there is the uh, Yorkshire Wold Way. I'm supposed to veer right here and head down this path, but it's not really a path, uh, where there should be a little site over the brow here. So this, this uh, big ravine here is the Wolds, and it's to do with folds of hills formed in the, cr cr is it the Cretaceous? Cretaceous period? It's a form of, caused by marine life compacting over billions of years to form limestone or chalk, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, yeah, you get this. Bear in mind that it's very soft. So if, there was, if this was caused by a slab of ice shifting, then it'd be quite easy to cut a ravine into chalk, I would have thought, but I'm not sure if that is what happened. But it is spectacular. And this path that I'm on now is called the Yorkshire Wolds Way which is uh, apparently lesser known in the UK, but uh, it is a majestic trek. I think it's about 79 miles long. It takes you all the way to Filey, just south of Scarborough. Oh yes. I bet it's fun in winter here, sledging to your death. And just appearing on the horizon there, is actually a church which is that church marks the medieval village which is what draws so many people to this particular trail there's about 3,000 medieval villages in the UK hidden pretty amazing just over here there's a a church. Now, I don't think that's a medieval church. I reckon that went up after, but I will find out, or we will find out. Above the church are some cows. <laughs> I guess that's the car park over there or something. It's kind of weird walking along the edge of this ravine. It's a bit like, well, it's just a bit awkward because you got one leg higher than the other. So it's kind of uncomfortable, constantly uncomfortable. But, uh, it's all good, it's all good, isn't it? It's all good. It's quite a steep slope here as we head towards the church directly. Wind in my back, people down there having a picnic. It's a really nice part of the world. Looking back, you see the, the wall as it was, or the ravine, the valley, the vale. I did little tiny steps here because it's quite, Quite weird because I'm walking both at an angle, the right side being higher than the left, but also down. So there's all sorts of <laughs> things for my pathetic brain to get its head round. Although I am glad I've got my stick with me to balance me off. Tiny steps. I kind of feel I want to go down to that bridge, but I'm not quite sure how. Oh, there's water. There's actually, there's actually water down here. <laughs> oh. Well, let's just follow the, go with the flow, as they say. This is weird, man. This reminds me when I came down Ben Nevis. Coming down was harder almost than going up because going up, you, you kind of, 
totally ruined and spent the muscles, all the muscles for going up hills in your legs. And then when you came down, it was a completely new set of muscles you were using and you, your legs didn't know what to do. It was weird. <laughs> You're right. Historic sites can be hazardous. Historic sites can be hazardous. You are, you learn something new every day. So there's like a pond there. People picnicking over there, there's a sign. Medieval mills and fish pond. This church here, pretty abandoned with some gravestones here. Let's see, how old is this one? 1840, 34 years old, 37. There's a tomb over there. Cross in the corner. Let's go and have a look in the church. In the corner, there's this stone here, which I'm trying to understand. It says, here lieth the body of Anne, the daughter of M. Will um, Vesti, who was buried March 29, 1687. And also the body of Ralph, the son of M. William Visoy, who was buried on August 1604. In 1695. This is St. Martin's Church and it dates from 12th century but has appeared in many different forms. It's been through like 10 phases of change and the current one is 17th century because uh, people's faiths and whatnot changed over the years so it was altered and eventually abandoned when the village was abandoned. And this is what remains. And I love the fact that it's part of the trail. You can actually, you have to walk through the church to get back on the trail, which is great. A really amazing building. They actually found 700 bodies in the church. And when they did analysis on the bones, they found that some of the children, or the bodies of the children, um, had been breastfed for up to two years which they think is what led to the low infant mortality back, back in those days. So here's the, I guess, a little mapping out of an old house that used to be here from medieval times. It's great walking through places like this. It's you're walking in the footsteps of ghosts. Now this looks like it might be an old house, and I'm sure it is old. But I'm not sure how old. And here's another one. And it looks like you can just come and walk on it, which is odd. But you know, I suppose if it's lasted this long, there you go. I mean, let's be honest, it is just, uh, a big rectangle with sectioned off areas for what were probably rooms and it's not that fantastic really but it's pretty fantastic because of what it means 
sets off the imagination, for me anyway. Makes you think how short things are, time-wise. And long after we've all gone, many millions of people will live on. It turns out the big house was actually uh, about 1890, and it was built uh, for a project that was going on, I think it's called the Warran Project, uh, where they were excavating the area. And there's photographs here of the architects, not the architects, the archaeologists, all sitting outside having their supper. And it's a built on the site of an actual medieval building, I understand. Now it's all blocked up, boarded up. Till another time, I guess. Uh, it feels like we're leaving the village now, but I don't think we are. I think it extends a lot further, but I, I believe there might not be so uh, pronounced the buildings. But uh, the guidebook says carry on. I will, I will see mounds indicating where the other buildings were. So here I go. I wonder where the car park is. Heading down now into the valley. There's quite a lot of people about now. Families, kids. Here I am with a, a stick, a hiking stick and a rucksack. <laughs> a bit over prepared. They're all in their t-shirts and shorts, <laughs> skipping through the village. So we're nearly, nearly back now. I, could, I think there's, I think there might be water down there. So we're heading back down into the the valley or the the vale or <laughs> I'm quite sure what to call it and I'm guessing there'll be some sort of bridge down here I've stopped looking at the guidebook now I'm, I'm using following my nose and I'm thinking that I'll be going up that hill over there to the car my favorite thing I'm trying to squeeze through the kissing gate which I can't do so I have to climb it I know I'm big boned but look look at this Look, look at the gap. That wasn't me. Oh, I was right about the water, but there's not much of it. <laughs> Cattle, it says on this gate here. Your dog can scare or harm farm animals. Well, at least this one's given me room to get through. There's a cow. There's a calf. Don't get between a cow and its calves. That's the rule. That's the rule we must all abide by. And it's heading up here now. A bit, a bit of an incline. To see the day off. Oh. Getting a bit out of puff now, going up this hill. These, these they look like they might be edible. Edible. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not going to say you should eat them. And just uh, to cover my back, uh, if you see anything growing in the wild and you don't know what it is, then don't eat it. And don't eat it anyway, because even if it's edi editable and you know, you know what it is, because you don't know what's, what's been on it, do you? So it needs to be taken home and washed, researched thoroughly, go to university, do a degree in berries, and when you're absolutely sure it's editable, eat it. But till then, think of it as poison. Maybe there, maybe there, I hope. Oh, for me, woe is me. Well, that was just a very short little trek there, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I had no idea this uh, was such a pretty part of the world, these walls, and uh, I'm really glad I've discovered them. I'm sure I'll be seeing many more on my, uh, my trekking adventures. I hope you enjoyed watching. Until the next time, Cheerio pie!